Hi, and welcome to another episode of Online Game Tech Drawn Badly. My name is Mark Mandel. I'm a developer advocate at Google Cloud. You may know me through some open source projects like Agones, but if not, that's fine. Uh, today, I want to talk to you about game servers once again, but I wanna to talk to you about optimization strategies for orchestrating your game servers across a variety of machines, or often referred to as like packing game servers things like that. To set the stage, a little uh, usual proviso here. Uh, we're talking about dedicated game servers. So if you want to uh, check out the previous video I've done on dedicated game servers, the link will be below in the notes. But very quick revision, if we have say two people, right, two computers here, and they wanna play a multiplayer game together, they're often gonna run and connect to a dedicated game server that sits somewhere on the internet. Uh, they're gonna send their information up. Say like if I'm a player running forwards, for example, here's my running player, you know, and that dedicated game server is gonna determine what should happen inside the game, the physics simulation, all the actions, etc., and then send that information down to this player over here. So they can be like, oh, player, this player over here, uh, they are doing the running thing. Cool, and vice versa, very, very simple. Okay, cool. So that all is great, but what I wanna talk to you about today is like, these dedicated game servers here, how do we run those on some sort of virtual machine or machine uh, in a way that's efficient for the platform they're on? So what do I mean by that? So essentially there are two different scenarios I wanna talk about today. One, I wanna talk about on-premises. So right, I'm just gonna draw a picture of a house. So this is where you probably own your own machines. You've rented them, maybe in a colo. You have them, either you bought them or you're renting them um, and they are your own machines in your own environment, I often call this on-prem. The other environment, and the one I'm most familiar with, of course, is the cloud, right? Where this is where you're only ever paying for the machines that you use. And because of this, we have different orchestration patterns for how we wanna do this and different efficacy or like efficiency patterns or optimization patterns for how we want this to run as well. So I feel like on-prem is a little bit simpler. So we're gonna start there with on-prem uh, and, and go from there. So. Let's start with the basics, right? Let's say we have, say we have three machines and we're just, you know what? I'm just gonna talk about CPU, for example. On average, there's about one CPU per dedicated game server, but it varies. Um, but let's say that these are, let's say we're dealing with four CPU machines, right? So we can go bloop, 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 bloop. Sound effects make a difference, right? So that's our room for our game servers. Now, I own all these machines because it's on-prem and they're always going to be running. So uh, no matter what happens, whether I have game servers running them or not, I'm going to be paying for them regardless. So if we grab a different color, here we go, let's do that. So if I wanna run, say, a dedicated game server, what I actually wanna do is optimize for redundancy and failover. Basically, if any one of these machines goes down, I wanna ensure that um, my game players, like the least number of game servers on there get shut down. So what I'm actually gonna do is I wanna distribute my game servers. So usually I have a warm fleet or a warm set of game servers up and running automatically, like waiting for players to come play on them. So I would probably want some sort of thing that looks like, let's say that's one, right? That's two, three, maybe four, right? maybe something like that, right? So say I have four game servers, I'm gonna to wanna to do something like this where it's distributed across the platform. That then means if in the worst case scenario, something bad were to happen and say that was to drop off, I still, it would only take out one game server. It wouldn't take out the rest. So this works out quite nicely. Right, so first, when I'm spinning up my game servers, I want to ensure that they're spread out across all the machines. From there, there's another layer to this sort of uh, distribution. So if I have, say, a set of players that have been grouped together, right, by a matchmaker probably, and they want to play a game, which game server should they get first? Um, and again, the same rules here should apply. If I'm gonna grab this game server here, right? Probably randomized is actually probably fine, but distributed is nice too. The next one I wanna grab is not gonna be the one that's next to it. I might grab the one that is on the next machine over and hand it to them and so on and so forth, right? So I'm gonna distribute my load out so that as I have people who are playing games, they should then next get this one, for example, and so on and so forth, right? So we're distributing the load again. So if any machine goes down, there's the least area of impact because we're always paying for all three of these machines and any others that we own because it's on-prem. We've rented them, we're gonna have them for a long time or we've bought them. 
So we wanna distribute this across as much as possible. Um, that's great. Then let's take it like one extra step further even from there. So we removed a couple of some players. They've maybe finished their game, etc. And maybe the game state has been this way for a while, right? We only have really two people playing the game on two game servers at this point in time. And we've got two spare game servers sitting there. Maybe just according to our game, we only ever really want one. Which one do we get rid of? So the same rules therefore apply. We wouldn't want to get rid of this one. That would be bad. Uh, we still have two here that are sitting there next to each other. So if that node goes down, both of them would, uh, go away. So really what we wanna do is have a look at our whole set of game servers and say, okay, what has the most number of game servers on it with ones that are free? Which in this case would be this one here. So we'd wanna get rid of that one and then have an even distribution across the load. Right? So these are the sort of things that on-prem we wanna do because we pay for all those machines. I know I've said it before, but it's super important. We're always paying for these machines. So we wanna optimize for redundancy, yeah? We wanna optimize for least area of impact if something goes wrong, because that's that's the best thing we can do. Cool, and that's and that's really cloud. That's uh, yeah. Those are the things you need to think about. Like you want to make sure that you randomize out or have a, a, a like a spreading algorithm that implements that over time. Awesome, very cool. All right, let's talk about cloud. Cloud gets a lot more fun. So let's put in place the same scenario that we had previously. Three machines, each with four CPUs and a dedicated game server that takes up one CPU each. Now, cloud is a little bit different. We're no longer paying for all the machines all the time. We only pay for the machines we are using at any given point in time. So let's say that we've started with three uh, three machines here. That means that if we have four game servers running like we did previously, we would want them all on exactly the same machine. We wanna pack those as tightly as possible because that then means we could potentially shut down both of these machines here and saves ourselves some money, especially at scale, this is super nice. But let's add a couple more game servers to make this a bit more interesting so that we split all over, right? So we've got say six game servers here. We've done that here. We have a third node that could potentially go away and we'd no longer pay for it, which is great. But let's apply the same rules and the same operations we were looking at before. So say we have players that wanna play a game, they've been match made. How do we allocate them a game server? Well, we can start on the node that has the most number. That's a, that's a good start because we wanna concentrate on that as much as possible. And then we would repeat this for each player set that would come through as well. So they would like go there, they would go there, uh, they would go there. And then once that was full, we could have people playing the game onto here exactly as well. So, right, both in terms of how we bring up our warm fleet is important so that we, we map, you know, the, the tightest packing we can on these machines. But then when we allocate from there forward and give games two players, the same thing also applies. Okay, so let's let's get rid of a few players. We've done that, awesome. We're down to three games currently being run on these six game servers we had previously. So scaling down at one point, really easy, right? Whenever we have an empty node or an empty virtual machine, we can delete it. That's great, love it. We have three game servers running. Maybe we just want a buffer of one extra ready one or one extra sort of one warm one sitting there. So now we can delete two. I think that you can probably see where I'm going here. Realistically, what we want to do is we want to delete these ones here. Those are the ones we want to get rid of so that we can get rid of the node. Uh, you may have heard before, if you've ever done anything with dedicated game servers, of like what we commonly refer to as the Swiss cheese problem. So if I do this wrong, for example, and I go bam, and I go bam, I'm going to have this one game server sitting here that is basically holding this one machine hostage. That's no good. We call it Swiss cheese because you end up with these holes, like the one we would end up with here, for example, right? There's a big hole there because it's not filled resource with, with anything and it prevents us from getting rid of other nodes in the system. So yeah, realistically, if you're going to scale down this fleet of warm game servers, you want a system that gets rid of these particular ones here. And that means that this whole node as well, we can get rid of that as well. And again, then we have this one particular one ready that's sitting there waiting for game players to play on it and they can move forward from there. I actually looked to uh, look at this in one extra way, which, which uh, a friend of mine pointed out to me, which I really like. If we have a graph, right? And this is time and players. And say we have a graph of play, right? It probably looks something like that, right? As you have peak times and troughs. You need to match that to a set of game servers that are gonna basically look Right, it's gonna end up like, that's a smaller chunk. Yeah, and then how many, right, number of game servers that you're gonna have over time for that. 
right? And as we draw squares, and you end up with this sort of square number of game servers, right? Like if this is the number of game servers that you have all the way through over time on both your uh, increase and decrease over time, there we go. That's not very pretty, but you see what I'm getting with that. And let me just, so you're creating these sets of game servers, but you have this little bit extra. So like here, 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 right? Like you always have this little bit of buffer that sort of sits above, right? As you go through, through that time. And essentially that little bit of buffer, that's money, right? Any extra resources that you're gonna have that you're paying for is a little bit extra. You probably want some buffer for having extra game servers have room to fill up, but any resources on the cloud that you're not paying for is money. So you wanna have some kind of probably automatic system that is going to scale these up and down to match your player load. Because, you know, in a in a worst case scenario, you might end up with a situation where, you know, at your peak, if you still have all these game servers and they're not doing anything, suddenly that's big money for no return. You want to spend the money on getting your players in your game and having them host your games as they run. So to wrap things up, if you're running on-prem, an environment where you're and paying for all the machines. Essentially, you want to optimize for redundancy and um, and failure impact. Yeah, if something goes wrong, affect the least number of things possible. By the same token, if you are running in the cloud, you want to optimize on cost and usage, which is essentially cost and the same thing. Yeah, so different environments have different strategies and each need to be changed appropriately as you move from one environment to the other. Just something to keep in mind as you're building out your game servers. Awesome. Well, before we finish up, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. You can follow me on Twitter at Neurotic. You can follow me on Twitch at Mark Mandel, where I occasionally stream open source stuff, especially Ghana's and game server orchestration tooling. And you can see me here at YouTube at Mark S. Mandel. Finally, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I hope to see you somewhere on the internet.